welcome everyone to Race Face TV in this episode of Race Face Spotlight. Today, we're going to go up to Sonomish, Washington, where we find 16-year-old NASCAR wheeling All-American Series driver Bryce Bizance. And Bryce, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm, I'm doing all right. It's actually the morning for me, but uh, so I'm a little tired, but I'm, I'm waking up. Up slowly up. For well, sure. and, and you've been on spring break, so this has really been like the kickback, sleep in, you know, one of the only weeks that you're going to have during this whole season to be able to do that. So, so that's kind of understand, understandable. Uh, so let's talk about this year. You're racing for Jefferson Pitts Racing, one of the top development teams in the country. Has that really sunk in? on how fast your career has accelerated here over the last 12 months? Yeah, actually, it just as recently, I was I was thinking, like, it's just so crazy. I just took such a big step from uh, 600s and legends to, uh, to super late models. And uh, it's, it's a really great step. And I've already learned so much. And it's just going to get better and better throughout the year. So I'm really excited to uh, what's coming for that. Well, and, and like I said, I mean, you're running for Jefferson Pitts Racing. Two of the good guys in the sport, Jeff Jefferson and Jerry Pitts. Uh, what's it like to work with the two of them? It's a, it's really great. They do a great job on uh, explaining things. And uh, I've just learned so much from them. Of how to, They even taught me how to set up the car a little bit. So it's not just how to drive. It's, just, it's also how to set up the car. And it's been, a, it's been a great experience. And some of the stuff that they're teaching me, I feel like I could use throughout my whole racing career. It's just a, it's a priceless thing that taught me. It's just such a, it's just such an honor to be racing with them. I just learned so much every single weekend. So it's a great takeout. And I know this summer when you're out of school, I think you're going to get immersed a little bit more because I was talking to Jerry and I think you're going to go up and actually spend some time with them in the shop and actually kind of roll the sleeves up and actually get in there and help them work on that super late model car, which, which trust me, when you do that, you're going to learn so much more about the car and that's going to really help your communication skills back and forth with them. So I would think that you got to be kind of looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah definitely. I've, uh, I actually visited there once. Uh, they have a really cool dog there, really nice shop. And, uh, yeah, I can see myself uh, being up there in the summer a lot. Uh, I got I got grandparents up there too, so I feel like I will be up there at least once once a week. So I'm, I'm really excited for that. Awesome, awesome. So you got two races under your belt. And so let's give us a real quick recap of how they turned out and what you've learned so far from each race to the next race that you feel like coming up on the third race you know, it's going to even make you better. Yeah, well, the first, the first thing, the whole, the whole big picture is consistency. That, that, if I get that down, I can be so much more competitive. But, I mean, these aren't, like, these aren't 40 lap races. These are 100 lap races. And actually, in a couple races, I'll have a 150 lap race. So, it's all about consistency. So, unfortunately, the first race, I was about... It's about 25 laps in. Uh, I, I just braked a little too hard. My uh, my chassis, uh, I, I kind of saw the sparks flying up that hit the ground and uh, caused me to spin. And another car clipped me in the front, which caused my radiator to start leaking. So unfortunately, I couldn't, I couldn't finish the race. I got back out there and raced another 40 laps. But uh, that race was good because you know, I, I learned that consistency really is everything it's not how fast you can go and qualifying because i actually qualified good that uh that race i qualified actually uh kind of kind of mid pack a little a little actually better than mid pack so um i really that race really taught me that consistency is everything and uh worked out great i ended up uh 14 car field i got 11th in that race uh, there's some cars that also wrecked out so it wasn't too bad. It was a good learning race. And for my second race, uh, this one went a lot better. 
It was a bigger car count, uh, which was great. Uh, qualifying, well, actually, first before qualifying, we had a we had some car problems. The hub just randomly snapped on us, so couldn't get our tires scrubbed in before qualifying. But still good. We still did good. We qualified mid pack, and throughout all the practice days, I kept on getting faster and more consistent. Then the race came. Uh, I battled for the first ten laps. Got shuffled back a little bit. Made up a few places. Then uh, I got clipped by a car uh, behind me, which unfortunately put me a lap down. But I ended up getting the lucky dog, uh, so I got back on the lead lap. I uh, passed a few cars, and uh, I ended up 12th, and it was really good. I finished all 100 laps, and uh, a great experience. Yeah, that's awesome, Bryce, because, you know, um, taking this big jump, and we're going to talk about this just a little bit. I mean, you, like you said earlier, you were racing micro sprints, you were racing legends, and then all of a sudden, it's this big, huge jump, not just to like a junior late model, or a pro late model, you've jumped into a super late model. That is a major, major step. And I know that those cars, they're more powerful, they're bigger, they're heavier, the tires are different. Um, you're racing against guys that are probably two and three, maybe in some cases even four times your age. Um, all of that is a lot to take in. I think you've done a really good job so far. And uh, you know, and as you said, you know, qualifying has not seemed to be an issue for you. So I think when you do get that consistency down, that uh, there's going to be some top tens in your in your future real soon. And, and that's just how you do. It's kind of like, uh, you know, what's the old saying? How do you how do you eat an elephant like one bite at a time? And, you know, you get you get to the point where, you know, it was a major accomplishment. Truthfully, it was to run all the laps. That's all you're trying to do bring the car home in one piece, run all the laps, and now you're trying to, to say, okay, I've done that now, now I want to start doing top tens. And then I think towards the end of the year, you could be, we could be having this conversation and you go, you know what, my goal now is top fives. Does that kind of yeah. how you see it yeah. kind of playing out between now and the, and the rest of the year? Yeah, yeah, it is. I just, uh, my confidence, got built so much up even just by finishing 100 laps because that was our goal for the first race and I didn't get that. So for achieving that the second race, it was just a relief. And I think throughout every single race, I'll get faster, more confident, and I'll be able to push myself a little harder. So, yeah. So I got to ask you, you ran, you ran a 100 lap race, 150 lap race. How physically tired were you when you got out of the car after then? Because again, you know, running, running micro sprints and legend races, I mean, a lot of those have been, you know, if you had a 40, 50 lap race, that was a big, long race. And these cars are so much more powerful, so much more heavy. Could you feel the physical drain on you after those, after those first couple races? Oh yeah, yeah, the, especially the second race, because I ran all the laps, I got out of the car and I was kind of dizzy. And my, actually when I got out, my head was kind of like this and I couldn't move it. I, couldn't, I had trouble moving it up because the G-force pushed my head like this. So I got out and I was walking around like this for 15 minutes. But yeah, I'll be, I'll be completely honest. I thought, I thought I was, I thought I was in decent shape. I thought I, you know, I thought I could just hop in there and wouldn't get tired, but I, uh, I got taught my lesson the hard way. And so, but yeah, after the first 60 laps, I really, really start to feel it, but I just keep pushing and, uh, we got her done though. And right. it's good. And for you younger drivers that are watching, watching this show, listen to what he just said, you know, which, which everybody goes through this. I thought I was in shape. And then all of a sudden I get out and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a whole new beast. So being physically fit, being able to have the endurance, being able to have the strength, what you'll learn is, is that that's gonna be a major benefit to you when you're running those laps, last 20 laps. Because if there's other drivers out there that are kind of getting physically kind of drawn, what that does is that plays to your mental side as well. That's where you start missing your marks and that consistency starts to uh, kind of, you know, disappear. So I think, you know, getting in the gym and really stepping up your, your physical fitness, I think you're going to see some major benefits for that um, towards the end of the year. Now, 
Here's another thing that I know that you've been doing. You've been doing a lot of simulator training with Racecraft One, with Kelly Jones, but you've also been working very closely with a motorsports legend, and that's Robbie Yunser. What has that been like? It's been it's been really great. I actually just had uh, two two hour sessions with him yesterday, and uh, he's been teaching me a lot. Actually, at first when uh, he first was teaching me, I thought it was just a uh, you know, it, it wasn't him, it was just someone with the same name, but to find out it was actually Robbie Unser was, was awesome. And he's a great teacher. He's uh, actually, uh, yesterday we were working on my consistency and uh, been teaching me a lot of good tips and uh, I'm excited to try, try him out in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I know after your first yeah, training on there, I can remember getting that phone call from you and, and, and you said to me, it's like, oh, that's pretty cool, man. The guy has the same name as you know, the, the, the big, you know, uh, IndyCar racer, Robbie Unser. And I can remember telling him, like, no, Bryce, that was Robbie Unser. And that, that's got to be kind of, that, that's got to be very, very cool. And I've kind of set in on a couple of those uh, training sessions. And he is a great instructor. And I think that uh, what you're learning there, I think each and every race, I'll be surprised when you go back for your third race, when you call me, I think you're going to say, you know what, those private sessions I had with Robbie has really, really, really paid off. Yeah, I definitely did. Yeah. So For a I great also session. know that you play, you play basketball. You're, you're a, a very good golfer from what I understand. So how do you balance all of these other activities? How do you balance that out with your racing? Well, it's pretty hard. Fortunately, uh, basketball is in the winter, so I don't have too much of that during racing, but golf gets a little tricky. Uh, I have it three, four days a week, depends if I have matches, but the three-hour practices after after school, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, so I got to, right when I get home, I got to do, uh, get on the simulator, do homework, so it's hard, but after after I did it for a couple of weeks, I started getting used to it, and it got gradually better and better. So I kind of got a system now, though, and it's it's working really good for me. Yeah, and I can see where the golfing is going to come um, in, into uh, into play with you as you get as you get older. And you know what they always say: there's a lot of business deals closed on the golf course. So I think the toughest part of for you is going to be like whether or not if you got a sponsor out there, you're golfing with them, are you going to let them win, or are you going to are you going to really beat their butts really bad? So those are things that you need to be kind of uh, talking about. Now, I know this is something else that's happened here in the last the last couple of months. And it's always um, kind of strange for our listeners, our viewers, to actually know that a lot of you guys that are racing these cars well over 100 miles an hour, competing against some of the best racers in the country, a lot of you don't even have your driver's license yet. <laughs> And I know that you just got your driver's license. So is that kind of a relief that you kind of got that out of the way? And, and, when, and I got to ask this question. When you did your drive with the, with, with the guy at the DMV, did you look over at the guy and go, hey, you might want to tighten that belt up? I'm not sure that I told you, but I am a NASCAR racer. Yeah, actually, I, they did ask what I did for fun. And I said, I'm a, I'm a NASCAR driver and I, I think they got kind of scared, but but luckily I kept it. I passed, so I guess I kept it uh, the speed limit. So that was good. Yeah, you could have really had some fun with him. You could have been like driving down the road and going, "I really need to get by this guy. Is it okay if I kind of bump him out of the way, or is that not acceptable?" <laughs> you know what he yeah. did? Really you remember that that uh, that commercial where Jeff Gordon put on a disguise? I don't know if you've ever seen that, and he. He rode with a guy that was a car salesman. I could see a DMV guy, you doing the same thing with them. That would be hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that would be pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, if you ever do that, make sure you mount some GoPros up in the car so we can kind of watch that. So let me just ask you another question. Um, I understand you got a couple of pets. Let's talk about them a little bit. I do. I have my... I have my dog, uh, Mocha, who's actually, she's in surgery right now, so hopefully she makes it okay. She uh, 
She has three kidney stones right now. Uh, so hopefully they'll be able to take them out. But she's been uh, my best friend for eight years. So she's getting up there. And uh, also, I also got my cat. She's actually, she's actually right by the door right now. She's trying to get in if she wants to be interviewed. But uh, yeah, she's, she's a spaz. Uh, she actually tries to fight my other dogs. Uh, <laughs> so it, it's pretty funny watching that, but she's a great cat. And also, I actually just got a new dog a couple weeks ago. He's a, he's massive. And he is uh, really scared of my cat for some reason. <laughs> but uh, he's great to have around here. Uh, really nice dog. Yeah, cats have the, the tendency to be able to set the boundaries really quick. I've got two big uh, golden retrievers are over 100 pounds each. And there'll be sometimes where the cat's like sitting in the door and, and the dogs will just be like standing there like, OK, well, I ain't going past that cat. And the size difference is, but you know what? I think you're the first person that's ever told me that you had a dog that had kidney stones. I've never, I've yeah. never heard of that. That's kind of crazy. Let me tell you what, hug that dog and really treat it special when it comes home. I've had kidney stones before. They're wicked. The pain is like crazy. Yeah. All right. Well, I will. Bryce, you know what? I want to thank you for being with us. We want to wish you the best of luck on the races that are coming up. Uh, continued success with all of your simulator driving. I also know that you're getting involved with a charity called Friends of Jacqueline. And I know that that's going to be something that you're going to be really, really good at. And for those people that don't know what Friends of Jacqueline is, our race face drivers are actually going out and they're actually adopting a child. And what they're doing is they're bringing that child out to the racetrack. They're basically there to support them. And this child is going through pediatric brain cancer. And so, um, Bryce, I just want to applaud you for, for taking that step. And I know that Friends of Jacqueline is going to be a big time. It's actually on your car, right on the hood it of it. So um, kudos for what you're doing there. And before we wrap up, um, I'm now going to give you a chance to give a shout out to any people that have helped you out so far to get to the place where you're at, where you're currently at. Yeah, first off, just so my parents have been really supportive. Uh, my mom's been taking all of my pictures because uh, I don't have time around the racetrack. And uh, my uncle, he, he lives he lives 12 hours away, but he somehow makes it to half my races. Uh, so big thanks to him and uh, also just Racecraft for helping me with my skills and uh, Jefferson Pitts for uh, just being a good crew. So that's all I got. All right. Well, very good. Well, everybody, again, thanks for being with us. Bryce, thanks for, uh, for tuning in. We look forward to checking back with you in a few months to kind of see how things are developing. And everybody out there, make sure to tune in next week for our Race Face Driver Spotlight. You can always catch Race Face Driver updates. Those are available at raceface.tv and on Facebook every Tuesday night at 10 o'clock Eastern time. You can go and check those out. Keep up with your favorite Race Face Drivers. Again, thanks for tuning in. And as always, we encourage you to go out and support local racing in your community. And we'll see all of you back here next week.